We're talking about the seven steps of developing a team, and you're on the very last step. Congratulations, you made it to the seventh step. Now that we have figured out all of the roles that need to be filled in order to accomplish the big vision and the big picture, and then you went to work on the lowest, the lowest entry level positions to start creating these systems, now you've got the system, you've got a package, you've got the, the manual book for the responsibility, for the role, for the, for the position, and you're looking to fill people, find people to fill that position. Step number seven is now you want to find the people whose passions, whose interests, desires, and skills fit the responsibilities that you have listed out. In the book, how to Win Friends and Influence People, which I highly recommend. It's a great book. It identifies how when you speak to people, you want to you wanna speak to them about their desires, about their, their goals, their interests. And I realize that a lot of times we have this like me communication that's kind of like, hey, I need your help on this or, or we have an event, we have this role, we have this thing that we need to be filled and and why don't you come help us? Flip the script, my friends. It's gonna be hard to attract the quality of people that you are looking to attract in order to um, fulfill these roles if you do this me communication. You wanna do what I call you communication where you are speaking in the terms of the other person's interest. Show a genuine interest in that individual and get to know in this in this recruiting process, this prospecting prospect process, you're you're talking to individuals and you're discerning their gifts, their talents, their skills. This is where in developing a team, you need to study how to discern their talents, how to find their gifts. And you're seeing what are their interests, what are their passions, what do they like to do? You're asking intentional questions to get to know them, and you're pre-qualifying them. You're not just blasting out your needs. You're talking to them to, to really see what has God laid on their heart. As an educator, I realize my responsibility is to see how has the Holy Spirit taken this student, what gifts, what passions and interests does this youth have, and what direction are they going? How can I assist the Holy Spirit in the God-given path that God has put them on? That's my role. And that's your role as any great leader would as well. And when you're discerning gifts, you, you could realize that usually if someone's coming up to you and they're saying like, hey, you're, you're uh, okay, this is, and this is an example. Maybe I, I published an article and the proofreading, I mean, the spelling, there was a spelling error somewhere and someone left a comment and they're like, hey, you spelled this wrong and that wrong and that wrong. And I'm like, oh, OK, well, I could take it as like they're being critical, like, oh, no, it's like they're they're criticizing the work and and uh, and get discouraged, as a lot of people do. Or I could be like, hey, that is an indication to me that they are talented in proofreading. That's one of the strengths they have that's stronger than mine. So then I'm like, hey, I really appreciate you letting me know about the proofreading. Part of the reason why it's like that is because we just don't have enough help and it's hard to keep up with all these things. Would you be interested in, in helping with proofreading some of the articles? And they'd be like, whoa sure yeah i'd like to help and that's how we've gotten most of the proofreaders that have joined our team with walks with god ministries is because someone noticed a mistake and then we invited them to fix the mistake i mean it, it's that simple um i heard a story of of um of another pastor who was was doing some evangelism they were doing a work and then someone came up to them and said hey why doesn't our church have a website? This thing is big. This was back in the 90s. And, um, and it's like, the internet is so needed. And he realized, he's like, you know, you're right. We don't have a, a website. Would you like to help us build one? And he was just like, whoa, 
I never like he didn't never thought that he he would be asked that. He was expecting the pastor to go fix it or do it himself or find someone to do it. But then he was asked and he's like, yeah. And he was empowered to do so. He was given the opportunity to use the gifts that God has placed upon him. And he built this website for the church and it became a very successful uh, church and they've reached a lot of people as a, as a result. And so you got to realize a lot of times when people are giving you suggestions or feedback or even what may appear as criticism, that criticism is because they have a high standard of what needs to take place because they know how to do, they know how to operate at this level and doing the best that you can. You might be a little lower than that and they see the gap between what they can do and what you're producing and they're convicted that it needs to be done. So they share and they want you to have their conviction. And so they're telling you to fix it. But by you giving them the opportunity to partake in that role, you are changing their life. God is changing their life through you. And um, and a lot of times they don't even realize that they could do something like that. But your God's convicting them to do it, and you're simply helping to give them the opportunity to fulfill the unique gift and the talent and this interest that they that God has given them. So it could be life changing for them. So I definitely encourage you to do that. That's one way to find out what uh, what gifts or what roles to to fill. Another thing is if you're producing content as a ministry or as a team, and you find that there are or or let's say. Um, I, I like talking about the YouTube team because I know um, the I know um, Kim, who we're working with, is going to be helping to develop the YouTube team, and so I'm 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 sharing some of these examples. So, for example, let's say we're producing content on the Army of Youth YouTube channel, and there are like five people that are commenting on every video, they're liking every post. I mean, a upload and they're engaging in the audience someone says some mean comment you got those haters and those trolls going troll -la 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 -la, and they're doing their thing and then they get on there and they they defend the the point of view or, or the bible or they share some principles and you just see that these five individuals are very engaged and you're like wow that shows that there is a blessing they are specifically receiving a great blessing from that portion of the ministry that is an indication that they would be more likely to want to give back. It's the law of imparting. Luke 6, 48 or 58, it says, Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed together, cup running over shall men give unto your bosom. So the principle is, as you're giving value in their life, and they're consuming this content on YouTube, they keep coming back because it's changing them. They really like it. They feel like they're part of the community. And because of that, they're being blessed and, and they've received so much. And it kind of feels, they feel as though they're kind of in debt by how grateful. This is the nature of gratitude. When you're really grateful for something, you want to share. You want to give back. You want to return. It's like what First John says, we love God because he first loved us. Trust begets trust. Love begets love. When you walk down the street and you smile at a stranger, they're more likely to smile. Smiles beget smiles. So in like manner, find someone who's blessed by that ministry and they will be more inclined that if you invite them, say, hey, have you ever considered joining the YouTube ministry team? Would you like to help to publish these videos to be able to bless more people in like manner? I will guarantee you that individual will be far more likely to raise their hand and said, wow, I never expected to be asked. Thank you so much. Some of your most dedicated and amazing team members are going to be fun from the people who have been blessed by the ministry that they're helping with. That's how you identify their passion and their interests. Where your time is, there will your heart be also. So you know their heart is there because they're showing up. So in like manner, there are, let's say you're, you're leading a kitchen team and there's a certain person on the team and, and they keep requesting like, 
we should have hummus. We should have hummus. I, I think we want more hummus. We don't eat that enough. And you're thinking like, man, what? maybe you're like, I don't know how to make hummus. Or maybe you're thinking like, yeah, that's a lot of work. I, I need some more help or whatever the case is. And take it as an indication that they want it. They like it so much. They would be more invested. They would be more fulfilled in helping in the kitchen to create the hummus that they want to have. And I, I guarantee you, they would be more inclined to cook and help out with that project than uh, something that is just random that you think you want them to help with. So it, this principle applies to all areas. When someone's passionate about something, work no longer becomes a job. It becomes the reason why you were born. It's when you're fulfilling your purpose, you it, it, it's it, it's like Matthew eleven twenty eight. Take my yoke upon me, Jesus invites you, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. When you really enjoy what you do, sacrifice becomes a pleasure. Suffering becomes something that you covet and be, you're willing to do it. It's not really an inconvenience because you love what you do. And it turns mountains into molehills. And that's what the power of love and passion for what you do is able to accomplish. So when you're looking for people to fill your fill the roles that, that you have systematized and you put together, look for people that are passionate about the specific area that they're in and that you could relate with. And you want to you want to make sure that you've got a job description that is able to clearly define the responsibilities and the revolving tasks that are involved with fulfilling that role and taking ownership of that position. This is crucial. And this is why I say the exhaustive list cannot be exhaustive enough or too exhaustive because the more details you have, it's going to help the individual make a better decision and make a commitment and have up front uh, you're able to communicate what's expected so there's not later down the road a breach between what happens actually and what was expected and then you got to break down a trust and then communication breaks down and then just the teams don't work together as much this it's very important that you have documented written instructions of what you expect the person to do don't think that they can re that your team members can read your mind just because it's clear in your mind doesn't mean it's clear in their mind you got to write down the the dynamics of the role and what it entails and with the systems and and things of that nature it's going to make a tremendous difference because if they are confused at anything remember this a confused mind is a paralyzed mind a confused mind is a paralyzed mind. Once I learned that, I realized this is why the team members are inactive. This is why the church members are not engaged. This is why people are not winning souls for Christ. They're confused. They don't know where to start. This is why there's not more leaders. They don't know how to develop leaders. If we could just show them how to develop a team, how to lead, there would be more leaders if we can show people how to work for God. Ministry of Healing says many people would be willing to work if they were simply taught how. And many people would be willing to work, but they were never asked. James says, you have not because you ask not. And Jesus taught a parable of the people who are idle in the vineyard. They were idle even to the 11th hour. And they said, why stand you all the day idle? And how they respond? because nobody had asked us. And you're like, wow. So just think about it. Your number one recruiting uh, principle is gonna be prayer. Pray for the people. Number two is gonna be asking. If you want people to join your team, ask them, invite them. The whole gospel plan of salvation is based on invitations. Jesus taught a whole parable of the guests that were bidden. They were invited. They were asked to in join this wedding. And this is what God has commissioned us to be as missionaries, where it says, go ye therefore and teach all nations. We have a great commission to become world-class 
askers, inviters. We are inviting people to join the team, to be a part of the army of youth so that they can play a, an important role of something much bigger than themselves. And as you're doing this, I just want to leave you with this little nugget, with this encouragement and this challenge is if you're going to be developing a team, you need to develop the skill of casting vision. You need to be ex able to explain to people clearly, to paint a picture of a better world, of a better future, of what could be accomplished if they join your team and how they can play a role in the big picture. People give their hands for a what, but they'll give their hearts for a why. People will dedicate their lives for a why. And if, if they, the what is irrelevant until, under, until they understand why we're doing it, your vision, the big picture, where you're going, that is why that's step one of the seven steps of developing a team is clarifying your vision. Because this is what's going to really unite the people together to have this common goal and where you could experience that team where together everyone achieves more. And you'll realize truly that teamwork makes the dream work. So as you're embarking this journey, I encourage you, friends, don't give up. Keep persevering. You're going to find challenges. I can't give you everything that I've learned in the last se several years of leading teams into these little course. But continue the journey and become a student of leadership. Really read the resources and study i mean the book christian leadership by ellen white powerful book i mean a whole book compiled just on leadership it's powerful i've got some google documents that have put compiled bible and and quotes together that you're able to um to better understand about leadership delegation so you can learn in weeks what took me years to learn and where i learned in weeks what took others years to learn it's powerful what we have available, but commit to the journey. Commit for the continual development because you are going to attract the leaders to the degree that you, you lead. If you're a level two leader, you'll attract level two leaders. It, the only way to attract level three leaders is you have to become a level three leader and you're gonna attract who you are, not who you want to be. So commit to that personal development. You should be studying every day personal development, spiritual development, and business development. These three subjects are going to really help you to understand more about how to develop your team and grow successfully in, in, the, in the calling that God has given you as a self-supporting missionary leader. So I hope that this course showing you the seven steps of developing a team has been a blessing to you. Let me know if you have any questions.